Today we're going to talk about my thoughts on update 1.1.4 and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome to Guardian Watcher. If it's your first time here and you love Destiny and learning all things about the game, then subscribe and click on the bell, that way you guys don't miss out on anything. As I mentioned a little earlier, I want to go over what I think about update 1.1.4, which is the one about going fast. If you don't know what update 1.1.4 consists of, then I will put a link to a video that I had already done, which breaks down the update. And that link will be in an annotation at the top right of the screen right now, or you can check out the link in the description below. Now that video was made before the update release and the link below gives you the full details that Bungie had released the day of the update. So this update to my surprise was amazing. Movement speed is just ridiculous and it definitely feels like D1 speed possibly even better. Naturally, I went with my Voidwalker Warlock to test everything out, but according to the patch notes, nothing changed specifically for the Voidwalker or the Stormcaller. However, even though movement speed was the factor that changed for every class, I feel that on my Voidwalker, it was especially needed. Prior to the update, the Voidwalker felt slower than a sloth while running or even trying to take cover. I'd end up dying as soon as I tried to turn a corner, but now I can survive, which is obviously a plus. But because of the increased movement speed, I think that the traveling speed of the Nova Bomb is a little faster as well. Now, this being the Nova Bomb that is in the Attunement of Hunger skill tree, that might not be the case though. It's possible that in this gameplay it just seems faster due to it being in the Mayhem game mode. Dawn Blade was definitely fun to use, yes. It has gotten way better, and whether it'll become a competitive subclass or not, well, only time will tell. I haven't used my Titan at all, so I can't really give you guys any input on that class, but as for my Hunter, well, let's just say the Hunter might be my 100% go-to subclass in PvP for Mayhem. Just don't tell my Warlock. A lot of the weapons in D2 feels different in the sense of being more powerful. The meta is definitely coming to a turning point and the reign of the Mita multi-tool being number one at the top is pretty much gone. Pulse rifles are getting a lot more shine. The Mita multi-tool is seeing less play, but it is still there. Although I plan on doing an entire video strictly on the meta later on this week, so stay tuned for that. I've done the Nightfall on all three characters and I still haven't got any Nightfall specific loot and I'm assuming the drop rate is like ridiculously low. So I guess, you know, the grinding continues. I'm still kind of confused on how challenge cards work though. I don't know. Maybe I gotta read into it a little bit more. I'll probably do that tonight. As for the maps and exotic repetition reduction, it's actually working. Well, at least it is for me. Let me know in the comments if you guys are still getting the same maps one after another and the same goals for exotics. The increase in super rate feels really good too. There was a 1 minute and 40 second increase to our super regeneration. Now I can get my super at least 3 times in regular PvP matches and I feel like if I blink my eyes in PvE, well, there my super is charged up again. <laughs> the quitter penalties that came with update 1.1.4 are no joke either. If you don't know what they are, then quitting in either the competitive or Osiris competitive playlist will result in a warning or a temporary 30 minute suspension to your account, not just one character. And it's funny because I feel that Bungie should have also applied this penalty to Trials of the Nine as well. However, Bungie didn't mention anything about quitting when it came to Trials in the patch notes at all. I am, however, happy that there is no longer a tracker map on competitive PvP. Personally, I would have just preferred this on Trials, but all competitive PvP is pretty much good too. Now, I don't know how this penalty will work for those of you who actually have bad connections and get kicked out of servers all the time. Come on, don't lie. I know some of you put a Wi-Fi extender in the McDonald's bathroom. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below which one of your friends or someone that you know is actually using McDonald's Wi-Fi and use integrity. Power ammo respawn timers are a very nice addition to this update. And one thing about it is that I don't like the whole one rocket thing though. And this is pretty much why I still use the colony. Because with the colony, you still get four grenades in the chamber. So 
that's a guaranteed two kills if they hit their target, or four kills if the opponents are already damaged. Shotguns and swords are nice too, if you want a guaranteed multi-kill with power weapons. For the most part, update 1.1.4 I feel was a success, but Destiny 2 is still far from being the game that we want it to be. There are many, 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 many changes that need to come to Destiny 2, and I will address those in my What Needs to Change series for this channel. With all that said, what is it that you guys like most about Update 1.1.4? Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this Destiny 2 video, then feel free to watch these other two videos. You never know, you just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more, because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.